So on March 10th, 2023, Silicon Valley Bank failed, and Tim and I have been telling people since then, we've been trying to tell you, that was just the beginning. I want to show you how it's inevitable that more bank failures are coming, and we are in for a serious economic storm, likely in 2024. So let's get right to it. So for the last 15 years, it's been virtually free to borrow money. Free money for everyone. Yay. Awesome. So this is the interest rate chart. And you can see from the end of 2008 until the beginning of 2016, it was pretty much free to borrow. Interest rates were virtually zero. They went up for a little bit for a couple of years, then went back right down to zero again when COVID hit. And now they're starting to head up very quickly, as you're probably aware. I personally think they're going to go up again, and if they don't, they're at least going to stay where they are for quite a while because they don't have a choice. So everyone thought this was awesome news when interest rates were super low, and it was, I mean, but most people didn't understand that this was temporary good news that we had to pay for later. And I'm going to give you an analogy here. This was like people being on ecstasy for like 15 years, right? Woohoo! Awesome! This is fun! We're having a great time! Until the ecstasy is unaffordable and you start paying for the years of use. It's so bad that it takes many years to return to a normal state of mind. Some people never return to normal all the way. And some people end up committing suicide because it's just too painful. It might sound dramatic, but it's actually pretty darn accurate. Our economy has been on ecstasy for a long time and the fun is about to end. You see, for all the years that Americans could refinance and lock in low rates and borrow cheap, what do you think that meant for the banks? The borrower's gains are the lender's losses. When the interest rates go up, which they are now of course, the banks are stuck with all the cash and the borrowers are sitting pretty. Well. The lenders are now broke with all those underwater assets. And in our current scenario, now all the borrowers have got hooked on the ecstasy as well. As you can see, credit card debt is at record highs. It just exceeded $1 trillion for the first time ever. You know how people typically try to get out of debt? They borrow more, ding, ding, ding. But now they're gonna be borrowing with higher interest rates, which means even more of their debt is gonna to go to interest payments rather than actually paying off their debt. Retirement assets are also dropping at record rates. Just look how big this drop is from the beginning of 2021 to the end of 2022. That means more people are dipping into the retirement savings just to pay off debt. But the people being hooked on the XC economy is really the little problem. The real problem is the bigger picture and the banks. So because of all the cheap loans over the last 15 years and interest rates now rising, and they have to rise in order to fight inflation, now the banks own all these mortgages and treasuries that have collapsed in value, rendering them all insolvent. For one example, everyone who got a 30-year fixed mortgage rate won, and that's a fantastic asset. On the opposite side, that's the bank's biggest liabilities. And side note, the housing market is a whole nother part of the problem because a majority of homeowners don't want to sell their houses because they want to keep their low mortgage rates. And a majority of the people who want to buy can't because they can't afford the higher rates. So real estate is virtually at a standstill right now across many parts of the country. We are almost at 8% for mortgage rates. And as you can see from the graph, we are quickly climbing, not good. Because of the super low interest rates for the last 15 years, there's a ton of these underwater assets and many banks are about to go broke. Now, it may be delayed a little bit because the banks will take all of this bad collateral to the Fed as they always do. And when this happens, it's supposed to be temporary. The banks are supposed to pay back the loans, but they can't because they would be insolvent if they did. So the Fed is going to have to extend the maturity on the loans to the banks, but it's going to have to be indefinitely because the banks can't afford to pay them off without failing. Now, if the Fed bails out the banks, which is usually what happens, well, that makes things extremely difficult this time because then inflation soars even more. Currently, the Fed is trying to fight inflation as we see with the higher interest rates. See, the whole point of the Fed lowering interest rates is to encourage borrowing since it's cheaper, which can stimulate the economy by increasing loans, spending, and investing. This can cause prices to grow too quickly though, so the Fed raising interest rates is meant to cool off the economy because people will borrow less, spend less, and invest less. 
Since we currently have higher interest rates, that means we are fighting inflation. But if the Fed decides to bail out the banks, the expense of that goes to me and it goes to you through the tax of inflation. This obviously means an increase in inflation. We are already at almost 4% inflation with the way we measure inflation today, which is also a complete lie. I'll talk about that more in another video, but the real inflation number is probably upwards of 8% with the original way the inflation was measured. This is all manipulated through the way they calculate the CPI, but again, that's another video for another day. My whole point is our economy is screwed. There's no way out. We've been kicking the can down the road for too long. We didn't ever want our ecstasy trip to stop, but it's being forced now. Our hand is being forced. Before the financial crisis in 2008, we were at about $9 trillion in national debt. It took us over 200 years to get to $9 trillion in debt. We are now at $33 trillion in debt. That means $22 trillion in debt in just the last 15 years. In 15 years, we more than doubled the amount we created in the first 200 plus years. And it's just piling up quicker and quicker. We went from $32 trillion to $33 trillion in debt in just three months from June 2023 to September 2023. The next half trillion took just three weeks from September 19th to October 9th of 2023. There is no way out of this one. This is much different than 2008. We have a lot more debt now, and since inflation is way worse, we can't just lower interest rates again to save the day because then inflation will be out of control and the system would collapse. But the Fed has also put us in such a hole that keeping interest rates high is unsustainable as well. No matter what door we choose, what's on the other side is not good. More bank failures are coming. It may be delayed, but they are coming. Mark my words, it's inevitable. Make sure you are prepared for what is coming down the pipeline. There's going to be some serious economic turmoil coming our way. I hope you have your hedges set against inflation. Make sure you like this video to get this information out to as many people as possible. We must group together during these times and help the world wake up. Also, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about what's going on. See you soon.